Hey guys, Jain Trasam Sethi here and we have a very nice member who's in the Hall of Fame, who's finished his um, certification and uh, he's in the AI community, Rahul. So without further ado, uh, first off, congratulations on achieving this milestone. Would love yeah. to know in your own words, your background. Yeah, uh, thanks, uh, Jay. Uh, thanks for this opportunity to uh, have this uh, kind of uh, introduction. And um, so myself, uh, Rahul uh, Thurat, so... Uh, my, my background is uh, I work for a, a multinational company um, in the capacity of a, a director of a project management and um, uh, overall uh, uh, carrying uh, uh, more than 27 years of uh, experience uh, in the industry, typically in the process industry. So in my career, uh, I got an opportunity to uh, travel around the world. Almost 14 years, I was uh, uh, placed in different parts of the world interacted with uh, different personalities, uh, culture, people, and uh, technologies. So uh, the organization where I'm working is uh, more like a technology organization and Fortune 500 in process automation industry. So my background uh, after uh, spending so much of a time in industry is to uh, know about the technology, you know, what is what is that great in this technology? Yeah? So that was the whole idea and that triggered my interest level. So another thought is uh, typically in the uh, in the business and uh, in the multinational organization, it's, it's always important that you know you should be up to date on the technology. So my my thought was uh, I should uh, as as a leadership team, you know, like we should introduce a change at at our thought process. So that was a primary idea, and uh, with that intent, I thought that okay, let me get into the details of the technology. And if I know that, uh, then I'll be able to connect that uh, practically to the different applications and uh, for the benefit of the industry uh, uh, to our employees and to our customers as well. <laughs> so that was a, a primary intent. And with that intent, uh, I, I came to know about you know uh, the courses, what you are conducting. A uh, couple of sessions I have attended, uh, you conduct a lot of sessions. I have heard your thoughts on, you know, how uh, not only about education, not only about, you know, running an organization, but how to contribute uh, to the society. So there are several thought processes. Huh? So <laughs> uh, I, I like those. And I thought that, okay, oh, why not give a chance? Huh? So that's where I started. For me, it was very, very um, a kind of, you know, odd uh, thing to learn at uh, this age. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, my intent was not to get into the coding, but at least uh, I should know how, how the things works. And, um, and that's where, you know, you and your team has done a, a great job in terms of uh, launching this course. Yeah. Of course, it took me a long time <laughs> because this was more like, you know, uh, as and when I got the time, you know, I, I ventured into that. So uh, this is this is more like a background what I'm having and why why I entered into that. And I'll I'll be happy to share more more things based on my experience on these technologies. Okay, so just for the purpose of audience, would you mind sharing how old are you? Uh, any guess? <laughs> Twenty five. Yeah, I, I I'm forty nine. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, so some of the the reason I had asked this Rahul was because many yeah. members who are trying yeah. to you know watch the masterclass or webinar. Yeah. Trying before yeah. to on the fence of joining the course, they'll have some limiting beliefs. Like yeah. I don't know coding, age is or yeah. not on the side. Yeah. Did, yeah. did you have any sort of such thoughts? And how did what made you flip on the side and you know jump and continue yeah. on the course plus community? It's a good question. You know, like uh, I personally believe uh, that learning continues uh, irrespective of age. Uh, so I met many people who are older than me. Uh, they were my kind of coach and I've seen them learning <laughs> at the age of 60, 65, even 70. Uh, I met some lawyers, some uh, some kind of people from uh, intellectual property uh, rights and patent and those kind of fields. And that's where, you know, I believe that, you know, learning is a process. It's a continuous process. We should not stop uh, learn from others, no matter from which age, you know, you are learning. Yeah, I like, you know, you have a young team, right? <laughs> so they know what's happening. Huh? So I've seen in the communities, uh, uh, there are professors, uh, uh, doctors, uh, engineers, a wide, wide kind of audience. And that's where, you know, I like that, you know, that's a bit different. Um, uh, so that's the way I look at it. Wow, that is next level. And uh, one more thing I wanted to touch upon was the programming. Yeah. Many people have this inhibition. I'm not from a tech background. I'm not from mathematics. Yeah. I yeah. don't know any programming, but you took yeah. that leap at, you know, 49, 48 last yeah. year when you came in. Yeah. Uh, 
वॉट आई एंड वॉट आई योर लिमिटिंग बिलीव दैट यू हैड एंड यू नो उसके बाद हाउ डिड यू जम्प द Yeah, say uh, uh, the kind of you know business we are in. Uh, we we do have a programming background, but we do it in a in a different environment. Yeah, but to answer your question, uh, the kind of technologies, evolving technologies, those will be no code, less code, or that will need a practical ex practical knowledge and experience. It's more like a domain experts. Uh, that's the way I look at it. Uh, doing coding uh, is is not a kind of you know mandatory things. That's the way I I believe in it you know? okay. because the kind of technology, kind of uh, the speed at which uh, the things are changing in the market, uh, future is going to be a no code uh, kind of environment. But it will um, require a lot of common sense in a way, <laughs> some kind of experience and your ability to connect the technology with the real life world. And that's the way uh, I see that. So I would definitely encourage even my organization, you know, where I'm practicing, uh, also uh, the freshers or the people who are looking to learn. So don't stop, learn it. Not necessarily you should know everything, but at least you will get a flavor of what's happening in the uh, marketplace. That's that's where my my belief is. Wow, next level. And since you are in a leadership position, Rahul, so yep. you know one of the things many people also have is I don't have time. Yep. Um, you know, office is too much of pressure. I'll do it later. Yep. But you yep. took plunge. You still managed. And since yep. you are on a senior leadership, how did you manage your time? What is the advice you have for people? Yeah. So to me, you know, you know like uh, same challenge was there, Jay. Uh, nothing wrong uh, in that. Uh, and again, mm -hmm. uh, that desire is important. so mm -hmm. uh, to me it it took me long time uh, almost a year uh, but my uh, my logic was you know when i used to go home uh, while going home i used to utilize that one hour to go through and hear those videos huh? not necessarily i have to type it so every day you know like or most of the time when i'm returning home or uh, there was a commute of one hour and that's the way i utilize that time uh, to you uh, do these kind of a uh, learnings apart from our typical traffic conditions <laughs> in india especially in pune city <laughs> so that's the path i choose uh, mm -hmm. again some topics were not very clear but which of uh, interest to me i revisited those i replayed those uh, videos so that's the way i i looked at it and it was more like a learning and practicing and uh, you know deploying uh, so that's the way i i kind of followed my approach wow so and when did you join the community uh, uh, i think a uh, year year back uh, in the month of jan and uh, and that's where you know i asked few questions you know at the time of joining is is it a kind of time bound thing i need to finish it certain things yeah. and um, that was not a kind of a limitation and which this is what you know i liked it uh, the mm -hmm. the most good and good. the best part is you know uh, i i deployed the learnings it's not like you know just learning and mm. uh, to me uh, it was more like a practical a human life or is a business you know anything can be can be deployed that's that's the objective i've carried always mm, good good yeah yeah we'll come to that part towards the ending yeah. so i also wanted to talk about your mindset so yeah. leading up to before the course so when you made yeah. that decision before that you would have been what was your mindset uh, okay. in terms of you know evaluating other opportunities or etc what it what it what struck out i know you told me about charity but can you double down on that a little highlight on that okay so uh, is the question is from uh, from the institute point of view like what kind of yeah. you know uh, caught, caught my interest you know like or triggered mm -hmm. my interest to, to get into it say first is you know the way uh, the things have been explained uh, in the introductory session uh, second thing is uh, the syllabus uh, so the things which are getting covered Uh, because uh, typically if you see the theories uh, lecture those are more on a you know bookish knowledge so what i what i've seen here is more towards the practical things and um, and the, the kind of lectures uh, those are you know pretty pretty refreshed you know it covers the latest trend so technology is changing uh, the way the delivery it also has to changed and that's what you know i liked it okay and uh, again you know like uh, there is a sequence given you know in which sequence what should we be uh, that student should be doing that was pretty good examples are good and um, uh, correlating with uh, the practical world it was a bit easy yeah. you know? so that's the way you know like uh, it it triggered my interest otherwise you know it could be a normal course someone will come and uh, deliver the lectures and they will go off and say hey go and do these studies wow. and go and do these exams that was not my intent Next so that's, level. that's the way I know. I I I found it a bit different. Very good. And were you able to do the um, orientation, which is the success mindset, and in terms of yeah, yeah, yeah. I I've done that. Uh, yeah, initially I spent some time, and I realized that you know why those are required, and then uh, 
uh, initial few lectures have gone through that and that mindset and is is very important you know if, if someone who's starting the career mid career or high, uh, towards you know at a, at a higher higher end in the career uh, that mindset is important mm -hmm. hmm. excellent and um, in terms of you know following the path etc um, hmm. so how did you pace yourself i know you worked uh, yeah. maybe hmm. uh, in the uh, car or the you know the, the commute back home but yeah. did you have like okay I'll finish the first few modules by yeah, the first yeah. month, second yeah. month what was the plan study plan okay so the way I looked at it you know like uh, learning the technology is one part you know certain part mm -hmm. is covered here uh, but there are some other things you know like uh, uh, prompt engineering open AI and Microsoft Azure and there are many things you know which are connected mm -hmm. so my, my aim was you know where to start and uh, said that you know so I, I started mm -hmm. practicing in, in my organization to change the culture mm -hmm. that's the first thing so it should be a data driven decision that's what you know my, my goal was. Yeah, so a lot of time industry leaders, you know, they are going with the traditional methods. Uh, today uh, is a need that, okay, the decision should be based on the data, uh, what each organization has. And that's where I started, okay, where should I start? And that's where, you know, these early lectures and topics and models and uh, your EDAs and because say, in and out in the industry, we deal with a lot of data, but there's no intelligence on it. And that's where my focus was. So there are a couple of learnings I had from the course. That's perfectly fine. That has set a path, right? So what should mm -hmm. what should be done next? Say for mm -hmm. example, EDA. Yeah, if I have to do that, uh, a pandas and Python and the kind of codes can give me. But unless I know that basics, uh, it will not be easy for me because if you go to Azure ML and standard products, the, there's a tick box which can do these kind of things, but not necessarily it will give you the intended results. Mm -hmm. So knowing principles is important. So mm -hmm. uh, someone has touched on the principles when it comes to mathematics, make it easy, make it more interesting. So again, you know, my path was, you know, learning is one part, but deploying on the actual uh, practical cases, what other path? So, wow. Yeah. Principles are so important fundamentals. Yep. And um, so as you went through EDA or statistics yep. and then simple linear regressions and maybe yep. the random forest, yep. Um, mm -hmm. you know, the topics that excited you and what were like that opened your uh, yeah so uh, typically you know like uh, what I liked is uh, initially in my organization also we spend a lot of time in doing coding and doing the exact one-to-one uh, -one relationship so it's more like a high-end code base uh, approach you know? and the mm -hmm. way uh, these kind of technologies are designed it's less code no code or do maximum with you know minimum coding uh, so that's a piece I liked it. And then I went into, you know, more details, like, you know, let's talk about then models. And then, you know, I explore different models myself. Uh, course has given certain kind of insight and everyday things are, you know, <laughs> changing. Uh, so from my perspective uh, in the industry, you know, the data security uh, aspect was important. Data confidentiality aspect was important. Protection was important. And then where the boundaries are, how we can. So there are a lot of things available in the market as a free things. But typically in an industry, there is a lot of risk in using this technology. So that was always my approach, more conservative. So if data goes out, it can be used in uh, any of the way. And that's where I spent some time on, you know, uh, the ethical practices and uh, uh, wow. may, may not be part of this. Uh, but when we come at business, you know, it's very important that how we treat that data, use that data. How do we take care of security? So that was, you know, a kind of, you know, core framework I was having in the mind. Wow. So it seems like you um, were already a practicing leader and you mm -hmm. had lots of use cases that yeah. were, you know, brimming and brewing. Yeah. And once you learned the technology as and when you learned itself, you kind of deployed it, you know, applied exactly. it, tried to well. the ROIs trying to convince yeah. business leaders, et cetera, which okay. is very fascinating. Not a lot of people do that. What yeah. advice would you give to, you know, somebody who's like a senior leadership level um, yeah. where, who have a very linear path of learning? Okay, yeah. I'll join the institute. I'll learn everything. I'll get the certification. Yeah. Then I'll think of deploying. Then I'll think of getting a job or a yeah. salary increment. Which yeah. is a great approach to think, according to you. Yeah, it's a very right question, you know, especially someone from a leadership level is joining. So very yeah. first thing, you know, I, I would encourage them to spend some time. It's not about, you know, knowing coding, but it's about knowing the concepts, okay? Mm. And understand the power of technology. That is mm. the first thing. So mm. once that mindset is set at the leadership level, you know, it helps the organization to adopt that. 
so if you look at me i am a conservative person you know the kind of you know organization and the industry we belongs to because it's all uh, you know like uh, oil and gas uh, pharmaceutical all mission critical systems okay and if something goes wrong with the data there could be blunders there could be penalties and that cost is so high as compared to use of technology so again so my my thought on my opinion on a leadership level is to have that flavor of the technology okay. see okay. that you know things can change yeah so instead yeah. of targeting something big uh, identify the smallest part uh, which can be smallest problem in the business which can be yeah. solved and that's where my approach was got it wow that's actually uh, very first principles i have never seen yeah. many people do that uh, your focus yeah. fundamentals focus yeah. on using um, on small use cases and you also talked about data ethics and uh, yeah. you know security yeah, yeah. which not a yeah. lot of people focus on yeah. got it Excellent. So the, the the data data security is absolutely important because a lot of time we have a data but that data belongs to customer. You know there are NDAs, uh, there are agreements signed, there are GDPR. Those are kind of laws in Europe. There are laws, specific laws in China, Italy, and it's very important to know that how we respect that. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, so as a, as an industry, you know it's very easy to develop application, but when we go go it for a commercial purpose, it's extremely important. We should know the data part of it, uh, know the ethics part of it. Yeah, yeah. So security part of it. And many times, you know, people who are on the fence of hmm. joining the institute yeah. or the way they think is yeah. they want everything in one, obviously, you know, in one, uh, uh, one program. Yeah. But the thing yeah. is, you know, you know, this, this field is evolving yeah. so fast. Like, yeah. you know, what you learn today, like in terms of at yeah. least the biggest technologies yeah. or the flavor, like you mentioned, is evolving yeah. very rapidly. How do yeah. you go about thinking that? Because it's not like medical field. Yeah. Like medical, suppose cardio vascular surgery or you know yeah. uh, neurology or uh, varicose veins these are things that are set since 50 years there's nothing Correct. new so how <laughs> and since you are a first principles thinker or a fundamentals yeah. focused person yeah. how do you go about thinking who who is not familiar with ai who is yeah. not familiar with you know data analytics or data sciences yeah. um to say that okay this is the right decision yeah. on how to focus on fundamentals yeah. how do you go about that yeah, it's a good question. So to me, um, you know, like any technology. Uh, so uh, to me, you know, AI is not the solution. A lot of people think that it's a black box and it can make the blunders. Uh, so my approach was completely different. <laughs> it's a it's a starting point. It's an assistance. Uh, so no matter, say, uh, uh, autonomous vehicle is there. But is that confidence there? Uh, so do we still believe that there is no driver and we can sit, relax and, you know, enjoy? Uh, that mindset is not there. So human mm -hmm. brain is much more powerful. Uh, artificial intelligence and the brain which machine is having it it will take its own time uh, but not necessarily you know it will be deployed everywhere so yeah. my take on technology is you know it could be github it could be prompt engineering it could be you know say uh, uh, open ai large language model and there are so many so many rapidly changing technologies are coming so instead of getting into too deep into that understand what that technology does check if, if how you can correlate with your uh, your business your day-to-day -day work and try to get some insight hmm? and then instead of concluding that will it work will it not work uh, try to get into some details uh, do some smaller parts check if you know do some feasibility studies or pocs or mvp you know minimal viable mm -hmm. products and see if it works if it works then go into a kind of a incremental ma manner so that's the way my approach is so now i'm learning those um, uh, large language models and uh, azure ml and uh, prompt engineering uh, so it's, it's pretty interesting you know like i i'm just you know uh, learning those concepts <laughs> and, and the baseline is you know this course you know it has yeah. taught me what are those fundamentals and i say hey, it's pretty interesting yeah? so let's get it to the next level and by doing so i am in a position to set up my own organization to start thinking and we we have changed that you know like we we, we have added that as our strategic plan wow next level Excellent. I mean, that's a very good answer uh, yeah. in terms of how you're thinking. Again, you went back and simplified it to like, okay, there's a fundamental and top of that fundamental. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. And how should a person of your level or leadership uh, think yeah. about learning? Do you spend 10 hours a week learning, mm -hmm. continue to learn? Because mm -hmm. you obviously have, should have be having family and, and mm -hmm. you know, spouse, uh, they, they're probably seeing you watch all the videos again and again. <laughs> Yeah. How should one allocate time? Yeah, the way I look at it, you know, like I don't, don't, no one has to go and, you know, sit at, you know, stretch, you know, like yeah. look at your time convenient to you, maybe at home or maybe sometime free. 
uh, or listen or contribute you know i i keep on you know giving lectures in educational institute uh, uh, start contributing mm -hmm. into you know as a as a kind of a panelist speaker and mm -hmm. that's the way you know i i started practice it's not about me learning but my focus is you know how the next generation students will you know get into that so a lot of work i'm doing with students now educational institute setting up their syllabus uh, creating a kind of a value chain in that kind of uh, institutes okay so it's not uh, for a leader it's not about you know knowing that spend a little bit of time uh, there is a rest of the organization to do and fix the coding and get into the details but having that strategic focus is important and that focus is possible only when you make an attempt to go at top level ideas and spend some time and then based on the interest get into the depth so that's the way definitely i would say to the uh, say, say that's the approach i followed <laughs> yeah so which which brings me to like the question the yeah. in terms of uh, you know your junior rank levels or mm -hmm. even your maybe superiors some of them are not in this race like some of yeah. them not um, maybe seen the benefits of ai they're still on the fence like should should i even upskill in yeah. ai should mm -hmm. i learn mm -hmm. they don't mm -hmm. think of learning and investing in a premium yeah. skill what are your thoughts you know in terms of motivating them or inspiring them Okay. All right. Good question. Huh? So uh, typically uh, the people who are top, who has to be strategic and then that's where the investment they have to make. And if they have to make an investment, which technology is the right technology? So if I, uh, so from my point of view, I always look at, you know, hype curve, sub Gartner survey reports, mm. which talks about upcoming technologies. Ours is, a, I work in a technology space, but you know, uh, any organization to that matter, it doesn't, it may not be a technology organization. It could mm. be a small scale industry. It could be a manufacturing state uh, set up. So look at, you know, which things can be automated, where the productivity can be improved, where the profitability can be improved, where the customer experience can be improved. And that's where technology can be introduced. You know, so it, oh. a few years back, there was, you know, Power BI's and those kind of things. Yeah. Now, these technologies can make blunders, right? So it can give you the right kind of uh, uh, data, a right kind of uh, insight to take a business uh, decisions. So oh. that's the way I, I look at it, especially. Wow. And what about youngsters? So you must have been managing many subordinates, etc. Again, some of them yeah. are data literate, some of them are yeah. illit data illiterate. Um, yeah. But many in the middle are in of the standard deviation curve. Uh, <laughs> so upskill, yeah. upskill karna, and then yeah, life yeah. happens, they're watching, you know, maybe social yeah. media, etc. Yeah. So what is I, I, yeah. Mm. yeah, good question. So I, I spend lo a lot of time, you know, of mm. my time out of my interest uh, to connect with the in uh, students via the institutes. Uh, in terms of their internships, in terms of their lectures, or say the what what point I tell students, you know, like um, uh, whatever you are learning, look at the practical application of it and see, and then uh, you know you see that hey, that's the problem, and it could be a social problem also. It's not necessary to any technological organization. If you look around, you know, like uh, your municipal corporations, your uh, uh, kind of you know governments. Uh, so like you look at it, it, it especially in India. Indian government has uh, is making up a policy for AI. They have kind of you know dedicated department. So look at that thought process. So it's so once we give the practical example or for the people who are beginning their careers, they should not be only focusing on you know learning the technology certifications, but the practical approach of deploying that technology to the actual problems. Yeah, and those problems need not be commercial or industrial. Day to day, you know, I, I meet a lot of students, you know, and the projects what they are doing. I'm, I'm simply amazed. And uh, I, I must say that, okay, I learn a lot from youngster Gen Z, and they are way ahead than, you know, what my thought process is. <laughs> no, I agree with you. So we, uh, yeah. some of the community members within us, yeah. um, and there's another college mm -hmm. we are working with very closely. Yeah. Um, they are like uh, 19, 18 year old, uh, I think 20, 21 year old, yeah. doing yeah. amazing projects. Um, now coming back to this, which is like towards um, the project that you had submitted, which is, I was uh -huh. my... Yeah. Uh, can you talk a little bit about both the project submissions you've done? Because we have yeah. a process which is the capstone, etc. Okay. But All you right. had gone one step ahead and already deployed, which yeah. means genuine, you know, maybe mm -hmm. revenue savings or um, cost yeah. savings. Yeah. yeah. Revenue. So typically, you know, like uh, in any industry, you know, like uh, we have got a lot of data available, yeah, but that data is not used. So also we also, uh, you know, I I have a lot of data in the industry what I have. So the first approach was. Um, see first you know how that data can be ingested or how that data can be indexed or vectorized those kind of things those are the things you know i've learned you know with the basic fundamentals and then i started that okay 
how to treat that data. So that was a project um, which I, I primarily was interested in to begin with. So it was more like, you know, a lot of inquiries comes from customer. And for decades together, we spend a lot of time in putting those proposals together. When we talk about proposal, so if I go into a market and if I want to, you know, buy a Dell machine, for example, I'll go on their site and I'll say, hey, this is what I need. That's the memory I need. So I need to feel certain things to get, get to my end product. Something similar in every industry, when your customer approach you, you need to build a quotation, which has got technical part and which has got a, a kind of, you know, commercial part. All right. So that's the project we have chosen. So typically, if you see any industry, there could be hundreds of people who will work together every day uh, to understand the customer requirement, decode that requirement and build those kind of, you know, proposals, which will have a technical part, which will have a commercial part. Now that data will be residing in Excel. There could be, you know, one Excel for per proposal sent to customer. And as if to just to simplify it. Yeah. So if you have done, you know, 5,000 kind of, you know, uh, proposals, you know, 5,000 Excel. For us, you know, it's more like a uh, in-house tools uh, on SQL, SQL database. That's where, you know, we generate those kind of proposal. Now, the idea here is use that data. And every time we give a proposal, we have a standard product range. Why do we need to reinvent the wheel? Look at, you know, the nearest match. That's where, you know, I, I started deploying those concepts. Huh? So look at, you know, uh, ingest that data, read that data into the data frame. Okay. Mm -hmm. And if I have to do it in a historical way or a conventional practice, a programmer will sit for a month and do all the studies and patterns and other things. And that's where I've seen the power of technology. So using the processing, the large amount of data, that was kind of, you know, the first thing I have observed. Second thing, you know, those are principles when I've learned, you know, like pandas and, you know, displaying that graphs and, you know, those kind of things. Mm -hmm. But nowadays, you know, there are uh, a lot of things, you know, available, new 4 js and uh, there, there are kind of some database frames, you know, which you can visualize. But since I was, I learned those fundamentals, I started deploying that. <laughs> so it mm -hmm. has given us a kind of a relationship. So it started with the absolute thing. So if you have a kind of a Excel data, and which has got, you know, say 30 columns and probably 7 lakhs or 5 lakhs record, which one to go and figure it out. And uh, started with the absolute approach. And then I learned that, okay, instead of absolute reference, give an indirect reference and let the kind of a model, we identified a model yeah, and then deployed that model and then given that model that, okay, go and find out on your own. So dynamically, okay, that's where we started. I, I kind of, you know, added the complexity and we started playing with it. And then we said, that, okay, how to, how to reach there, you know, like, um, and then those kind of threshold, Euclidean distance and um, uh, a nearest match and uh, a vectorization to begin with. So those are the key, key things I tried. And uh, then I said, okay, oh, all right, that's working well. So objective here was not to get the exact output. Yeah, but at the end of the project, what we achieved, what I could manage to see that if I give an inquiry, if there is a big data, and that goes as input as a data set and it produces the output which is usable for the usable for a business okay so that's the thread i have picked yeah and based mm -hmm. on that thread you know like we have got several people you know who can you know develop the concepts further but you know that's where you know we are getting into a, a kind of a secure framework now under microsoft uh, azure uh, that that's where you know our fundamentals were data security protections and uh, management and that's where, you know, the next level of work will happen. So to me, uh, the project was to identify the challenge. The challenge is, you know, a lot of manual efforts are being spent. Uh, idea is to improve that productivity. So if we take, you know, three weeks to, you know, build a proposal by mm -hmm. doing this, uh, assistance to the proposal can be provided uh, in, say, five minutes by wow. building the right parameter. That's a part. Yeah. Wow. So and... if you see that that's a saving and it's not only for human efforts, it's for leadership to take the action. Yeah. So leadership will say that, hey, that's what it's going to cost. I'm going to approve it. They will also have some chatbot. We, 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 we are planning to build that. And then, you know, it's a, it's a practical application. So uh, so that's more like, you know, that's where I, it was the smallest thing. It's not a big thing. Identify the small thing, see if it works and then scale that further. That was the whole idea. Wow. Next level. So your project after yeah. learning, you know, the concepts in the course of the mm -hmm. community yeah. and your own sort of yeah. uh, leadership management experience, you yeah. found a use case mm -hmm. and that use case is in terms of productivity enhancer. Right. You were able to use mm -hmm. the AI concepts to bring down and suppress Correct. something that takes three weeks to theoretically five, ten minutes. Yeah, there you go. 
wow yeah oh my god so that's that's where you know i see that you know there is a practical case and now eventually it will uh, uh, my vision is to get uh, do more investments learn something more and that's where i'm into now uh, this azure ml and uh, uh, this prompt engineering so here is a hard coded model now so model will have certain thing it will expect some input in a certain way yeah now the next phase i'm going to practice now is instead of you know we giving the a firm kind of input those inputs will come as a natural language and that's where open AI will come into picture yeah so user will yeah. give the kind of uh, uh, things you know say i want a product with this specification suitable for this type of industry having a specification or compliance to iss standard could you please give me a kind of a technical and commercial solution so if that the prompt comes as a as a kind of open ai and after learning i i learned that you know it gets decoded into a sql kind of queries and those queries we can pick up in the background, fire the APIs, connect those APIs to the model, and there's a lang yeah. chain and things like that. Those are coming. Hmm? So yeah. those can be used again to you know take it to the next level. So the whole yeah. idea uh, here is to we should know the principles first. You know why I could manage to do that because I started learning those principles and see uh, are those concepts feasible for a business purpose. Yeah, Perfect. and that's I started building it on top of it. Wow, and. Um... You did this independently, like nobody had forced you from our institute or from your. No, no, no. <laughs> no one, no one forced, uh, uh, forced me. Uh, yeah, you know, like uh, I worked with a lot of students, <laughs> and they taught me. <laughs> <laughs> no, so that's, that's yeah. That's so they taught great. me. Yeah, hey, why are you doing it this way? Uh, and then yeah, there's a vectorization method. Oh, all right, okay, let's talk about uh -huh. it. Yeah. And then there are there are models, you know, like uh, there's Misral and there are, there are you know Lambda and uh, Google has something. <laughs> And then I said, hey, interesting. Let's let's give a try. Uh, so it's more like trial and error and see, you know, what problem we can fix. <laughs> and now I'll be in a position to, you know, make an investment, put a strategy and, you know, get into a more like a, a professional use of deploying the technology. Yeah, this is actually very big because um, I forgot the name of a startup that recently raised funding. Uh, yeah. They are also into, uh, you know, not productivity enhancer, but they also take like a three to four week RFP for government proposals yeah, and they yeah. cut down, uh, not to your order, like not yeah. five, 10 minutes, but less than like half an hour types. And yeah. that raised a lot. And that was also a huge Y Combinator startup. Um, yeah. Maybe there's like a huge startup idea or since you're already working for a fortune brand and maybe if your you know, bosses and the management approve, you know, yeah. after all of the hierarchy, yeah. Yeah. that could be tremendous savings uh, because I know that um, for government contracts and all that's in a that's a billion dollar idea because yeah, exactly. typically you know including India US everywhere yeah. the minute you talk about RFP in government yeah. Uh, yeah. you know that that itself is like a labyrinth and uh, you yeah. know huge friction yeah, yeah. so next that's level yeah. so wait a minute so one year ago you didn't know much about AI you oh, had nothing. not the idea you were, yeah you, You've come in, you've finished the course, community certification, yeah. and you've deployed yeah. it, and you're trying to do savings, and you're doing speeches, and yeah. you're doing this thing. Wow. Can, <laughs> I, can I work for you? <laughs> no, no. I'm impressed with, you know, your, your knowledge and, you know, uh, the kind of, you know, experts you're having. Yeah, because I've studied your profile, I've attended your your lectures and your, your thought mm -hmm. process. And I said, okay, hey, it makes sense. You know, let's, let's get connect, uh, connected yeah. and, you know, let's start working more. Yeah, even even in future, you know, if you are okay, will be I'll be happy to connect with you and stay, remain connected to see how yeah. best we collaborate in future. Hundred percent. Yeah. Now comes coming back to the focus of this discussion. So many people, uh, one of the things are um a little shy. They are not mm -hmm. confident once again, mm -hmm. and I will uh, touch yeah. upon that. Am I eligible for this course? Uh, yeah. you know, have a gap year. Maybe I'm also you know 50, 60 years again. I wanted to circle back. What is the you know inspiring or motivating, um. Uh, um, you know, discussion you can have with them, one message you can have for them, yeah, for yeah. women also, um, yeah. because you've you've seen some latitude. Now you know youngsters. You've yeah. seen Fortune 500. You've seen 14 countries. Yeah. Um, yeah. You have like this perspective, right? What was the message you'll say to them? Say my message to you know anyone who wants to learn, uh, enroll. Uh, so not necessarily you should know everything. That's what my first take is. At least you will get a flavor. So there is a piece of a coding which is fine. Uh, see how long you can understand, which is fine. Now, GitHub, and there are many, many models, you know, like in future, five years down the line, you don't have to do the code. Someone, mm -hmm. model will do, machine will do for you. 
So knowing the concept is important. Their practical application is important. Uh, mm -hmm. What all kind of, you know, um, softwares or, uh, you know, what kind of, you know, model-based approach which exists in industry now. Understand that. So my advice, you know, you should not or anyone should not be restricting that, okay, this is only for technical people. That's first thing. So if a commerce graduate is there, let him or her be part of uh, the course, learn on their own and see how you can relate to your industry. So that's more important. If someone is from a medical field, someone is from the, the educational institute, you know, they can solve their day-to-day -day problems by knowing yeah. the technology. Yeah? And it's not necessarily that you should be doing everything. You are the person who will be the kind of enabler or a facilitator or a coach mm -hmm. to make the things happen. And this will happen only when you will have a flavor of the technology. That's the message I will definitely give. Wow. Brilliant. <laughs> All right. So that was next level in terms of... Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, I have a lot of fun. Thank you once again yeah. for coming here. Congratulations on finishing Thank the certification you. successfully and deploying it in your own company practically yeah. and seeing some early signals of yeah. um, good savings. Um, yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Um, thank you once again, Rahul. Yeah. And Thanks, uh, Thanks. Yeah. for those of you watching this on YouTube or LinkedIn or Twitter, wherever, you know, drop in the comments, subscribe and uh, share it widely. You don't get yeah. a person who is, uh, you know, hands-on practitioner and make a lot of notes about what you learned in the comments. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> thank you, Jay. Yeah.